Hello, everyone. So my name is Jason, and today I'll be talking about vector and scalar. So you might uh, learn this in pre-calculus, but it's also the fundamental uh, when you do physics. So yeah, we'll learn about this. And in the end, you will learn uh, why speed and velocity are not exactly the same. Okay, so before we start, um, I think the best way to understand and learn physics is to solve problems. So we'll be solving a few problems during the lectures to understand the concept better. And um, when you solve physics problems, um, we usually write answers in um, standard units, which are meter, kilogram, kilogram, and second. So just try to remember this as um, NKS. Okay, so um, this would be a type of question that we would solve in the end. And I would just like to read it with you guys. So a car travels 20 kilometer due north and 35 kilometer in a direction 60 degrees west of north. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector of the car. So. Um, the objective of this like whole lecture is basically learning what magnitude, direction, vector, and what resultant vector is. Okay, so first, um, what is vector and what is scalar? So the basic difference is that vector, um, as you can see in this picture, um, vector has both magnitude and direction, but scholar has only magnitude. So what I mean by this is, if you look at this picture, um, for vector, it would be five meters, which is the magnitude, but it would also have uh, the, the, the direction, which is east. But for scalar, um, you would only have five meters because like I said, scalar is only the magnitude. So, um, yeah, just remember that vector is magnitude plus direction, while scalar is magnitude. And additionally, um, for vectors, um, the, here, this part is called the tail, and where the arrow is called is the head. And yeah, that's kind of intuitive. So yeah, so um, for vectors, um, you can also add vectors like numbers, but it's kind of different. Um, so when you see um, vector sum or vector addition, uh, I think it's important to remember um, this phrase, which is connect tail to head. And what I mean by this is, um, let's say that there's vector A and there's vector B, and like questions ask you to find the vector sum of these two vectors. So, and that's called the resultant vector. Um, the result of the vector sum is called the resultant vector. So if you put the tail, let's say that uh, vector B is the second vector and vector A is the first vector. So I said to connect tail to head. So if, a, if you put the tail of second vector right next to the head of fir first vector, so, second vector, which is vector B, uh, if you put the tail of it right next to the head of head of the first vector, which is A, and it would um, shape, it would um, shape like A vector like this. And then the resultant vector would be um, when you connect the tail to head, so that's why I said to remember connect tail to head. And this would be the resultant vector of vector A and vector B. And one thing to notice is that if two vectors have the same magnitude and direction, they're considered same vector. So um, actually this um, image and this image is basically the same because vector A just moved upwards, but still the magnitude, which is this, the length of this is still same. And the direction of vector A is still same. So this is also 
um, vector a plus b. So yeah, so this resultant vector and this resultant vector would be the same. So remember um, to remember connect tail to head when you add vectors. Okay, so um, this is an example problem. Draw the resultant vector of the two vectors shown here. And yeah, I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve it. Okay, so um, yeah, so like I said, vector is magnitude plus for direction, right? So for this, let's say that this is the first vector and this is the second vector. So like I said, if you put the tail of the second vector right next to the head of the first vector, it would form this kind of shape. And then, like I said, connect tail to head. So if you connect tail to head, it becomes the resultant vector. So this would basically be the resultant vector of these two vectors. Okay, so next um, we will learn about how to um, put vectors in the polar coordinate. So I put a slide about polar coordinates. So um, in polar coordinates, um, you, instead of saying X comma Y, you usually um, express point as R comma theta. And if you use like trigonometry, the um, height part, which is here, would be R cosine theta. And the base part would be R sine theta. And usually the magnitude um, would be the square root of um, the base squared and the height squared. So yeah. So similar, similarly, um, if you put vector in polar coordinates, um, and vector in polar coordinates is important because um, when you solve like projectile motions in the future, it's important to um, express in the x direction and y direction of a single vector. So um, let's say if this is, the, um, this is the x component of this vector, this is the y component of this vector. So the x component would be a cosine theta, uh, like I mentioned in previously, and the y component will be a sine theta. And the magnitude of this vector would be this, because when you use the um, Pythagorean theorem, you would get this kind of answer. Yeah, so um, I think um, to understand this, um, uh, solving a question would be good. So a car travels 20 kilometer due north. Oh, and remember to kind of draw out this question while I read it. So a car travels 20 kilometer due north and then 35 kilometer in a direction 60 degrees west of north, express the car's position, which is the resultant vector with magnitude and direction. And I um, put this image because um, people, it, this is kind of confusing because west of north and north of west is kind of different. So for west of north, it's when um, you want to express the angle from the positive y-axis to negative x-axis, negative x-axis. So that's called west of north. But if you want to express an um, angle from negative x-axis to positive y-axis, um, that's called north of west. And that's pretty similar for um, all different quadrants. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'll give you a few seconds to try solve this problem. Okay, so 
to solve this problem, um, I would I kind of drew this in the polar coordinate. So, like I said, the car travels twenty kilometer to north. So that's what I did. So, let's say the car started at the zero point zero, and then it traveled twenty kilometer north, which is right here. And then the question it says. Um, 35 kilometer in the direction 60 degrees west of north. So this would be 60 degrees because like I said, west of north is um, from here to here. So this would be 60 degrees. And let's say that um, 35 kilometers, the magnitude would be 35 kilometers. So the car would move from here to here, and this would be the um, final point of the car. So like I said, um, let's first draw the resultant vector. And resultant vector is connecting the tail to head, right? So if you connect the tail to head of this car's uh, motion, um, this would be the resultant vector. However, this is not the end because the question asked us to um, express the car's position, right? So we have to know like the, the direction and magnitude. So if we first um, try to solve the magnitude, uh, magnitude is pretty easy because if you use the Pythagorean theorem, um, if you look at this right triangle, um, the height would be 20 plus 35 cosine 60 and the base would be 35 sine 60 because when you use the like X component and Y com component that I told you, um, the magnitude of B vector is 35, but 35 sine 60 would be this yellow part, right? So if you move this to right here, um, this would also be 35 sine 60. So the height would be 38 and the base would be 30. So the resultant vector, the magnitude of the resultant vector would be 48 when you use the Pythagorean theorem. And for direction, um, you could either express um, with um, west of north or north of west, but um, when you want to get the direction, you could use tangent, um, inverse tangent, um, because tangent B equals um, 30 over 38. So B would, uh, beta would be 38 degrees, or you could do tangent A, which would be 38 over 30, and A would be 52 degrees. So 38 degrees west of north or 51 degrees um, north of west, both of them are fine when you want to express uh, the vector. So through this problem, um, I want to emphasize that when the question asks you to um, express some things like position or the resultant vector, you have to make sure you put both magnitude and direction because that's like the definition of vector. So like I mentioned in like my first slide, um, what's the difference between speed and velocity? Um, so speed is basically scalar and velocity is vector. And we could see this in like cars because cars have speedometers, right? And if you think about speedometers, um, the reason why it's called speedometer is because it only express speed. It doesn't express velocity because speedometer does not tell you the direction of your car is going, right? So speedometer only shows like 50 miles per second. So yeah, it's important to know the difference. So speed is scholar while velocity is vector. And for if velocity would tell you like both magnitude and direction. So yeah, um, that's the basic difference of speed and velocity. Um, yeah, and I would like to end this presentation with a famous quote from, yeah, great physicist Einstein. Thank you.